Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're jumping back into Venom, to where with this one we take a break from like all the crazy time jumping. But even with the way that this issue seems a bit more linear, I wouldn't be surprised if later on if we found out that there's a bit more going on than what it seems at this point. And I'll get into what I mean by that as we make our way through. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so at this point when we jump in, it's really more of a continuation of issue 4, when the Venom symbiote had made its way to Alchemax and bonded again with Dylan. And we come to find out that from there, they had successfully made their escape, alongside with Sleeper, who we had seen Dylan trying to break Sleeper out of his containment just moments before the Venom symbiote got there. But then also with us going back and picking up from this moment, we also get back into that reaction from Liz Allen, with her seeing the Venom symbiote bond with Dylan right in front of her, and she knows without a doubt that this evolving change that she's seen with the Venom symbiote that is directly tied to it bonding with Dylan. But also she's well aware that it's not something that Dylan's doing in intentionally and it's not like he's trying to power up but instead it's very passive and this catalyst is just a byproduct of his dna and him bonding with the symbiote and with liz allen noticing this she sees it like okay well dylan's innocent but he has everything to do with this because when she saw the venom symbiote bond with dylan to her it looked like she was looking in the face of war and what she does from here it very much goes back to her being in that state of asking herself like oh my god like liz what have you gotten yourself into because also with the way that liz responds to this it also goes back to what meridius had said in issue four to where he mentions that he couldn't have planned this out or convinced liz better than how this had just played out with her seeing dylan bond with the venom symbiote and her witnessing a glimpse of that evolution with her own eyes because from here in response to this event she makes the decision upon herself to just lie to the media and tell them that this this was a symbiote attack while also declaring them to be a hostile threat but as if that wasn't enough she then announces that she's allowing alchemax to make all the resources available to senator crane and his symbiote task force and with her doing this it's not a secret that senator crane is working with calton drake and liz knows with her handing over the resources of alchemax to senator crane that she's putting a lot of heat on dylan's head but at this point she figures if it turns out that dylan is the only casualty in all this then she'll consider herself lucky with that outcome and again with us seeing this fully play out to the extent of Liz handing over the resources of Alchemax to Senator Crane alongside with the Life Foundation. Like Meridia said, he couldn't have planned this better himself. But then it's here where we then go back over to the Life Foundation and we see Carlton Drake along with Mr. Carson to where we find that Carlton Drake is building a team likely of men handpicked from Mr. Carson's crew to accompany him with similar gear as himself. And in the meantime, while Mr. Carson is choosing his crew, Bedlam is out there on the hunt for Dylan. But then it's here we also jump over to Dylan 13 days after the incident to where he's been taken in by this guy by the name of Jake, who's head of a motorcycle crew called the Renegades. And he's allowed Dylan to stay with him because he's seen that this kid has nowhere else to go. But even with Jake allowing Dylan to stay here like in the back office of the bar, he still lets Dylan know like he's going to pull his weight by helping to clean up, changing out barrels in the cellar rather than just sleeping and eating his food all day. But also we come to find out that the reason that Jake even took Dylan in, it's mainly because he had saw a bit of himself in Dylan. And he lets Dylan know that it started when he saw Dylan with the jacket with a big dipper on the back, which reminded Jake of a crew that he used to run with called the Seven Saints. And back at the time, his crew, they were just amped up and ready to fight for something or someone. But much later, Jake had started over, he started the Renegades, and this new crew that he has now, they've established themselves in this town. But for Jake, looking back on all of it, he says that all he really has to show for all the fighting is a bad hip, a blown left ear, and this bar. Which in a way you can tell that Jake's really hoping to find not only a way to help Dylan for now, but also hopefully show Dylan how to navigate and make better decisions rather than just fighting for the rest of his life. Which in a subtle way, or maybe even a not so subtle way, it's almost like Dylan has gravitated to Jake because he reminds Dylan of his father, who in the case of Eddie Brock, we talked about how Eddie has been fighting his whole life. But also in this case with Dylan meeting Jake, and Jake giving Dylan the example of how he started with the seven saints to where then eventually jake took his own path and he started the renegades to where at that point for jake when he got older and he stepped into the next stage of life and started a new crew with a new name to where now even with jake having a crew he really just runs the bar for the most part 
and it seems like in a subtle way that this is an influence that both Dylan and the Venom symbiote need. And we'll talk more about that idea in just a little bit, because at this point in time with Dylan helping to clean up the bar, he doesn't really see the point in why, because from the time that he's been there, nobody's really come through the bar. But Jake lets Dylan know that today he especially needs the bar clean because he's called in what's left of his old crew, the Renegades, which again is the later crew that he had formed just before opening this bar. But we come to find out like with Jake calling in the fellas, it's not just for a good old reunion, but instead he's called for them to come through because recently another crew called the Hellhounds who at this point is the crew that runs things around this area in Baywater. But recently the Hellhounds were hit for their weapon stash and Jake knows that pretty soon these Hellhounds are gonna come out and they're gonna try to shake things up wherever they can in order to try to get some answers. And so when Jake tells this to Dylan, he also asks Dylan like, you wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? And in response, Dylan tells Jake that he pretty much knows what everyone else knows because at this point, all kind of rumors are going around about what happened to the Hellhounds. Some say they were hit by a ghost, some say a bear ran, through there but more importantly with the way that dylan tells this story or expresses what he quote unquote heard and he tells jake like whoever or whatever did this to the hellhounds the hellhounds had it coming because as far as dylan's aware as long as the hellhounds have been in this town they just run this place into the ground and for dylan though he's not being straightforward and telling jake that it was him and the venom symbiote that did it but instead it creates the situation to where jake he may not actually know what happened but between him and dylan there's almost like this don't ask don't tell kind of thing almost as if what's not spoken is just understood and what's understood just doesn't need to be explained but over at the hellhounds camp not a whole lot is understood and a lot needs to be explained and when we see len leader of the hellhounds asking one of his men like what happened and his man's telling him like man it was one of them alien cinnamon boats that be all over the news when really he was trying to say symbiote but hey get it how you live but in this case with Len not knowing what exactly happened to his gun stash or his men for that matter, he had then sent out a ton of his guys to go shake up the town and not only to get answers but also as like a show of strength. Cause Len believes like with the hellhounds getting hit this hard that if they do nothing about it then it just makes them look weak. And with word getting to Len that Jake had brought the renegades back in town, Len sees the renegades as a crew that he needs to make an example out of. Regardless of the fact of if they had anything to do with the hit or not, Len's bringing the fight to Jake's bar regardless and of course with jake having the experience he more or less knows that trouble's coming his way but at this point up on the rooftop we go to a conversation between dylan and the venom symbiote to where pretty much the venom symbiote is telling dylan like yo like why are we still here because with the three of them being on the run including sleeper like no, they're, they're not doing too good of a job of the on the run part but instead they're sitting here in the middle of nowhere fighting for people that they barely even know and when the Venom symbiote tells Dylan about some of the threats that they have chasing at their heels, as far as the shady corporations, crazy dudes in high tech suits, not to mention their recent discovery of Eddie still being alive, and the Venom symbiote asks Dylan like did he forget this? And Dylan lets him know like of course he hasn't forgot, he knows his dad's still alive somehow, and when Eddie told Dylan that he could trust the Venom symbiote, he did. But even with Dylan getting the approval of Eddie to trust the Venom symbiote, Dylan admits again that he's not his father, and he wants to figure out how to do this, whatever this means may be his own way and at this point dylan understands that eddie didn't want him to bond with the venom symbiote because he didn't want dylan to step into the darkness that came along with it and he wanted dylan to have the opportunity to become something else something different and at this point for dylan he's still trying to figure out what exactly that is but because when they're bonded, the Venom symbiote, he can feel Dylan's desires and his thoughts. And he can tell that Dylan doesn't want to kill. He doesn't want to hurt anyone. But when they're bonded, the Venom symbiote knows that something is different. Because with Dylan, the Venom symbiote is unleashed because of something within Dylan. But that unleashed territory, Dylan shies away from it. And the Venom symbiote lets him know that it's likely because Dylan's afraid. And not just of the unknown, but also the possibility of if he lets go, that he'll end up taking a path just as lonely as what his father did. Which again, really seems like the subconscious reasoning to Dylan clinging to Jake. Because for Dylan, though he may just see Jake as company or someone to protect and someone to fight for, in a way it almost seems like Jake's location on the outskirts of the town, right along the path of where Dylan was going, and even Jake's history, which sounds like the perfect one-to-one -one analogy of what Dylan needs in his life right now, and it almost seems like Jake is a version of Eddie who had went back in time and lived this life just to be there for his son in this moment. And who knows if that's the case, and man it would be deep if it was, <laughs> because let me find out that Meridius has Drake, 
and Eddie's got Jake, cause that would be a crazy plot twist. Especially with Dylan learning from Jake's experiences and what Jake's been through with the change of crew and change of name and those lessons and feelings transferring over to the Venom symbiote. But I don't want to go too deep too soon, so I'ma just leave that there. But going back to the rooftop conversation, the Venom symbiote brings up his name, which he had told Dylan back in King and Black with it not being a name that you could actually say but more so something you can feel. But it's here when the Venom symbiote brings this up, telling Dylan that he already knows the true meaning of the Venom symbiote's name. I am Strife, I am Glorious War, wherever I go, the battle shall follow. Like a shadow you cast over all those you hold dear and close. And he tells Dylan that Dylan knows this deep in his bones and so does his father. Which again is not just a reminder of who the Venom symbiote is, but it's also a bit of foreshadowing as far as the idea of we are Venom. But with the symbiote saying this, Dylan's just like, yeah, I know because Dylan's still pulling away from the idea of being like his father. But then there's a noticeable commotion off in the distance, which Sleeper calls to their attention like, what they doing over there? But with seeing this, again, Dylan, he wants to be the hero. He wants to be the protector. He wants to go over there and help. And with the Venom symbiote not wanting to go, and really not even wanting to stay in this town, really, but with Dylan telling him more or less like, fine, me and Sleeper will go check it out, but you remember what happened last time we split up? To where then the Venom symbiote is just like, fine, all right, I'll go. Because the last thing he wants is for Dylan to go out there and just be in over his head. And so with them heading out that way, deeper into the town towards the commotion, which we know is coming from the Hellhounds, but down inside the bar when Jake gets word of what's going on, some of the guys from his crew, the Renegades, they tell him like, hey, we should go check it out. But Jake tells them, no, nobody's going anywhere. And he lets them know like he didn't call these guys over here to fight a war and he's seen enough blood spill to last a lifetime. But also with him going on to say like whatever's happening out there, it's likely someone else's problem. And it's said in a way almost as if he knows that the same person who brought the fight to the Hellhounds to begin with is the same person who's gonna handle this. To where then we see Dylan bonded with the Venom symbiote again, making his way out to stop the Hellhounds from tearing Baywater to pieces. But of course with all the trouble that the Hellhounds have already caused, the chaos that was already going on here had made the news. And amongst that news footage, it's been reported that a symbiote was spotted and now the question is raised to whether this was another gang attack, which is common in this particular area, or if it's a symbiote attack like those that have been reported nearby. But nonetheless, with Venom making the news again, this broadcast just shows Bedlam exactly where Dylan and the Venom symbiote are at, as Bedlam hears this broadcast from another bar as he's cracking open the cold one, or so it seems. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons and also welcome some new patrons, Stuart H, Midnight Sun, and J. Kale. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.